you're going to see a great scrap in this game between one of Germany's strongest players, Georg Meyer, with white, against Fabiano Caruana, the new challenger for the world title, playing around three of the Grenka Chess Classic. And, well, also, if you're looking for a good answer to the Spanish exchange variation, then keep watching. e4 from my e5 from Car Caruana, and now no Petrov instead. Caruana plays knight c6, and off to bishop b5. e6, and now here, well, all my career, I played bishop a4, keeping that bishop. And I never quite understood, I've never really understood this Spanish exchange variation. It's gone in and out of fashion over the years, but frankly, I don't like giving up the two bishops. That light square bishop can be such an important piece. Anyway, openings are very much fashion, about fashion. Spanish exchange variation, of course, used by Lasker in St. Petersburg 1914 to defeat Capablanca. Um, and then, well, it fell into, it fell out of favor. And then Fischer revived it in 1966 when he played a few games at the Olympiad and, well, with great success. Um, but, well, there are a lot of decent answers. You can play, a Bishop D6 is a very popular move these days. F6 is the old main line, and Caruana played Queen F6, something a little bit different. Now, in Fischer's 60 memorable games, there we are, I have it here, my Bible when I was growing up, I should say. Fischer recommended D4, now that's the move that Maya played. This was taken. Fischer also recommended Bishop G5 as an improvement over E5. And here, Fischer stated that after queen g6, queen takes d4, white can get a clear initiative. I'm quoting Fischer. And that's true. However, he didn't mention this move, queen d6, which has a clever move, played by a few notable players uh, uh, fairly recently, including Pavel Elyanov, that um, says a lot. And the idea is that, well, after queen takes d4, then this endgame doesn't present any difficulties for black at all. So we trade and play something like this and castles queenside. And it's very difficult to convert that four versus three majority when black has the two bishops, very free development for his pieces. So Maya took on d4 with the knight. And Caruana played bishop b7. Now, probably the most prudent move for white is to trade bishops. That kind of reduces a lot of the tension in the position, but gives black very, very easy development. You can castle queenside or kingside. Maya played bishop b3, and now knight h6. And now things start to get interesting because black is looking to play knight g4. Uh, with an obvious threat on h2. So queen d2 played by Meyer. Now if knight g4, then bishop f4 prevents that, no problem. Caruana played g5, and he said that he prepared this line four years ago, but never had the chance to play it. The idea is that the pawn controls f4, therefore knight g4 as a threat is reinstated. So f3 is probably a prudent move here. Um, to cover g4, and black can go for an ending with c5, and I think black is absolutely fine. You've got to have respect for the bishops. Black must be fine with the bishops. My played knight f3, just adding a bit more pressure to g5. Oh, I, sorry, I should also say that if this pawn is taken, then black gets excellent play on the g5 with rook g8. So knight f3 played. Rook g8, supporting the pawn. And now, if white wants to kind of calm things down, then of course you could trade queens. That straightens out the pawns. But, well, it, I mean, I think white, white would be pretty unhappy with this position from the opening. Your opponent has two bishops. Um, objectively, probably okay for white, but black with two bishops would be happy. But Meyer showed that he was up for a scrap. He played h4, of course, exploiting that pin on this diagonal. But that is an incredibly risky move, advancing a pawn 
in front of the king. And, well, if Caruana wants to put the brakes on, he could trade queens and play f6 and hold things. But he showed he was also willing to have a real fight here and switch the queen over. He said he just couldn't resist this. So pawn takes pawn. So that closes the g-file, but now the knight flies into g4. Knight c3 and h6. So obviously if that's taken, then there are problems down on g2. So therefore bishop f4, bishop b6. So Caruana looking on a good day to get the rook to d8. Bishop takes, preventing that, and rook c8. So if the bishop retreats to g3, then the rook comes into play, and that, that could be a bit annoying. So Maya put his bishop on b6, which still covers the d8 square. And pawn takes pawn. Okay, so things have settled a bit after that flurry. We can see that black has sacrificed the pawn. However, there is an open h file. Watch out, the white king. And those two bishops in the centre cover some really important squares on the d file, preventing any great counter-attack. So first thing is, Maya has to be careful about the simple switch of pieces to the h-file. So he switched his knight over to the king's side. Now, queen takes pawn in this position would be inadvisable if here then, for example, rookie one, and suddenly this position can turn very easily. White has a counter-attack through the middle of the board. Caruana continued with c5. Now, of course, that blocks out the bishop. Knight g3, very important for white to cover these squares. And black switched his pieces to the h-file. So at the moment, those knights cover the crucial squares, but you know, it feels like the sword of Damocles is hanging over white's head here. Very tricky position. And it's not easy to see how white... Um, sets up here. How do you get counterplay? Maya played b4 here, which I think is an overreaction. Um, I was thinking that he should play a4 here with the idea of rook a3, and that could possibly defend on the king's side, but also to play a5 to, to protect the bishop, lock that bishop in on b6. I mean, it's a very unclear position. I mean, both both players said afterwards they weren't exactly sure what what they could do. Caruana couldn't see a, a clear way through, but he thought that he could just build up slowly if necessary with f6 and king f7. In any case, b4 was played, but this is really an overreaction. Caruana took it, and now material is even again. Now, Maya did this in order to bring the bishop back. So hits the rook and f6. And now c3. <clears throat> Black has to be careful of this, this break with e5. So if bishop d6 comes too early, then e5 can really break things open. But Caruana took on c3. And here, it looks like he missed a big move. I mean, he was trying to make this move knight h2 work all the time and there's a very nice trick if white gets a bit frisky and tries to exploit the pin here then there is a really lovely winning move knight f1 great idea so obviously knight takes allows queen h1 mate uh, rook takes allows queen h2 mate and king takes allows bishop check and king here and it's a force mate very nice so that's the big idea um after knight h2 of course knight g5 not force knight e1 is better but here bishop g4 is clever so once again looking to stop the king escaping by covering the e2 square. And if f3, now that opens this diagonal, so be careful. Rook c4, threatening bishop c5 check because d4 is now covered. 
And well, okay, the basic idea is that if takes, then bishop c5 check. It's still, I mean, there are possible defenses for white here, but it should be good for black. But even at this stage, both players were you know, running short of time. Uh, Caruana just played a pragmatic move, king f7. So his king is in safety. He's connected his rooks. Rook c1 and rook c4. Well, it's a pretty useful square. And I think, you know, Caruana was thinking if he can keep that c4 square under control, then at some point, you know, he might be able to land some big check with the bishop or just cover the, the king's escape route. So I think that was that was partly behind his reasoning behind playing rook c4, and that's why he played that and followed it up by supporting with b5. And now queen a5 played, looking for counterplay. And here Caruana went with knight h2. The, the computer recommendation is bishop d6 here, and Caruana said he was looking at this move, but you know couldn't be absolutely sure um, because of e5, which just blows the position apart. Obviously, the idea with bishop d6 is to to be able to to hack off the knight on g3, but after e5, this is fantastically unclear. You know, could one be absolutely certain of this? when suddenly black's king looks a little bit exposed. So Caruana played knight h2. And here white should go with knight e1. <clears throat> and I mean, again, it's very hard for, for black to make progress here, actually. You can, you can always come back with knight g4. But instead, Maya played queen takes, e, queen takes pawn on a6 which is a bit of a collapse because now knight takes. And here the simplest win is queen h2 check, <clears throat> followed by rook here because obviously, well, the basic idea is if rook takes, check, and bishop b4, game over. So, uh, and if the rook avoids that, let's say here, then you take, <clears throat> and play rook c2 with inevitable mate one way or the other. I mean, the move that Fabiano played was also very attractive, g4, because now this opens up the diagonal and this rook is on pre. So if rook takes, then bishop takes and the king has no escape. So there's, there's going to be queen h2 here. And that's that. So g4, very attractive move, actually. I mean, you know, you, you could you could just see yourself playing that move because it sets up a really nice mate. But Maya played f4. It's the only move, the only defense. And that keeps him in the game. Queen takes played. Rook takes. And pawn takes. And here, white's only way to defend really is to bring the queen back via a5 to be able to cover along here, potentially along with queen e1 as well. I mean, black is better here, but still, still some work to do. But instead, Maya, well, both players are short of time here. He played bishop e3, which is now losing because after the after queen f3. Black has this threat of rook h3 and just destroying um, white's defensive position. So the game actually finished rook d6 now. Don't be tempted by this. But instead, rook h3. Yeah, Fabiano had calculated this extremely well. So rook takes and now rook takes knight. And this leads to uh, a force checkmate. Queen takes now. If the king goes to f1. We give a check here. This is nice. It's good good to see. A um, bit of checkmating practice here for you. So if the king comes to e1, then bishop b4 mate. And if the king comes to g1, we can see the power of queen and bishop 
working together and mate on g1 on the next turn. So queen takes check. King came to h2, and again we're going to see a checkmate. And queen f1, and here Maya resigned. If king here, then check. And another very pleasing mate using queen and bishop. There we are. It's a nice crossfire here. Well, there we go. Fabiano wins a, a really nice game. Um, how convincing was that? Well, I think pretty convincing. Um, certainly, Maya collapsed at a certain point. Uh, but it's great to see both players playing really enterprisingly. So if you're interested in seeing more games by Fabiano Caruana, then do click on the info button above and you'll see playlists there. And also in the video description, you'll see lots of other playlists that uh, might interest you. So there we go. Uh, after three rounds, we have two players in the lead, actually. Maxime Vashtielogov with two and a half and Nikita Vitugov from Russia also on two and a half. And Fabiano is now on two and Carlson on two as well, among others. So who's going to win this tournament? Let me know what you think. It's it's fantastically strong. We've got Anand and Aronian, Maxime Vashtielogov, uh, Carlson. Who do you think is going to win? Let me know. Thanks for watching.